Hello, hi, my name is Arslan. Um, I'm one of the search security stars working at uh, Royal Oldham, uh, came across from Manchester, United Kingdom. Um, thank you, Sages, for giving us the opportunity to present our uh, results of meta-analysis. Uh, meta um, so, okay, so we don't have any disclosures to make. Now, just looking at the backgrounds, we know that uh, tower colitis is one of the common chronic pathology in the Western world, and incidence does increase with age. Um, it can be complicated or uncomplicated with, more so often, complicated diverticulitis requires a surgical intervention. Uh, even though the prevalence of diverticulitis is very high, but 10% of acute diverticulitis only require a surgical intervention. Um, we all know that in 1978, he described the classification for perforated diverticulitis, where Waldorf pericolic abscess is graded one, grade two is pelvic abscess, uh, grade three with purulent contamination and grade four is a fecal contamination for uh, peritoneal space. Traditionally or now currently, Hartman's procedure has been what's been used for hinge three and four disease. Uh, it does have its mortality of 15% and unfortunately 70% of the patients will have permanent colostomies. Uh, also, one of their colleagues, they did the first laparoscopic peritoneal lavage. Uh, the laparoscopic peritoneal lavage does have its benefits in reducing the endotoxin levels, uh, where it promotes the drainage of blood, fe uh, feces, and bacterial contents, as well as the devitalized tissues, which not only reduces the septic load, but also improves uh, the risks uh, and reduces the risk for multi organ failure and improves the hemodynamic stability of a patient. Now, there is no clear consensus. The American Society of Colon and Rectal Surgeon 2014, they suggested that there is no use of laparoscopic peritoneal lavage in management of peritonitis after diverticular, uh, perforated diverticular disease. But there is some recommendations from European Association of Endoscopic Surgery in 2006 that LPL can be used in selected patients in specialized units. For fecal peritonitis, I think so he taught men is the treatment of choice. Now because of this, we aim to perform a comprehensive systematic review of the literature and meta-analysis to look for um, the L outcomes of LPL versus stigmoidectomy in perforated diverticulitis patients. We use our standard PRISMA guidelines and selected the randomized controlled trials where outcomes of LPL and stigmoidectomies were, con uh, were compared. Uh, all the patients that were selected were HG3 and HG4. The primary outcomes we looked at are mortality, morbidity, reoperation, and uh, complication in top abdominal abscess formation post procedure. And the secondary outcomes were selected as uh, procedure length, uh, sorry, t procedure time and length of stay. Now, extensive search was performed on multiple databases. The last search was performed on 28th of December. The spreadsheet was formed in line with the Cochrane's database collection. The data was collected on st study related data, demographics, and the primary and secondary outcomes. Two authors, they individually looked into the titles and the abstracts of the selected studies, um, and if there were any discrepancies, the third author's advice was sorted. Uh, assessment of risk bias, we used the Cochrane tool reference for that. Uh, dichotomous outcomes, uh, we used the risk, uh, we calculated the odd ratio for that, and for continuous variable parameters, we used the mean difference. Uh, results were plotted as forest plot, as well as with 95% confidence intervals. Uh, we use Cochrane Q test to calculate the heterogeneity, and obviously for inconsistency, I two test with uh, the parameters being, uh, as mentioned, to look for the um, low, moderate, or high risk of heterogeneity. Um, now we identified 154 articles, but after careful selection and of and reviewing the title, as abstracts, and full text reviewed, the four randomized control trials was selected for our meta analysis. Um, 390 patients were in total. Out of them, 202 underwent laparoscopic peritoneal lavage, and 188 have open sigmoidectomy for perforated disease. All the patients that were, select, that were in, included in these studies were HG3 classification. Unfortunately, based on our data, we were unable to calculate any secondary outcomes. Now, just looking at the mortalities, if you look at this a forest plot, uh, 13 patients have perioperative deaths in laparoscopic lavage group and four, uh, 14 in the laparotomy group. Um, there was no significant difference in the mortality in between the both groups, and the study heterogeneity was low. Looking at the morbidity, we can appreciate that the laparoscopic lavage group does have high overall perioperative morbidity with almost 111, more than 50% of patients have significant morbidity after the procedure. 
the study heterogeneity was moderate in this group. For intra-abdominal abscess formation, there was again high risk of abscess formation in laparoscopic lavage group as compared to the open sigmoidectomy procedure, and study heterogeneity was again low. For reoperation rate, uh, again, we did not find any significant uh, distribution between the laparoscopic lavage group or between the sigmoidectomy. 34 patients have all reoperated in the lavage group as well as 35 for the laparotomy group. So there are, the, 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 the treatment has evolved over the last few decades and centuries. First of all, it was three uh, stage procedures in the early 20th. Um, the, the Mikulics and their colleagues, they first performed the laparotomy uh, and peritoneal washout for diverticular disease. Comparing the above two studies with the emergency Hartman procedures, there has been significant reduce in mortality, about 25%. And saline irrigation along with that, again, there has been studies suggesting that mortality reduced by 38% with that. With the involvement of laparoscopy surgery, laparoscopic peritoneal lavage has been advocated, but there is no definite consensus about that. The studies which have been in favor of laparoscopic peritoneal lavage suggest that there is, it's safe and feasible to perform and is better for the management of patients. There is a recent meta-analysis done by the Sheikh et al. which concluded that LPL to be safe and quick alternative, even though they do have high uh, intra-abdominal abscess formation post-procedures. Uh, the recent stomatic review that was done in 2015, again, suggested that definitive treatment in 25 patients can be performed with LPL. Um, the studies which probably does not suggest any superiority of laparoscopy, they have that no, no reduction in the complications or um, morbidities for following the post. LPL compared with the open sigmoidectomy procedures. But with the advent of CT scan and good targeted antibiotics, we can manage probably localized perforation uh, with no generalized peritonitis without, with conservative management. There has been a couple of other studies which do have very high success rates for parit laparoscopic peritoneal lavage, um, going more than 95%, but recent case studies done in 2010 and 2013 do have their failures of 34% and morbidity of approximately 56%. Our limitations were it's a small uh, number of RCTs with a small sample size, um, unfortunately unable to calculate the secondary analysis, and there was some performance bias between in the, in the, was high in three studies. Um, we concluded that laparoscopic peritoneal lavage does have increased risk of morbidities and perioperative complications, but there is no significant difference between mortality and reoperation rates. The results of our sensitivity analysis were again consistent with our main analysis. There obviously need to have a future high quality randomized control trial to again have a conclusive evidence. Um, unfortunately, we could not conclude any conclusive evidence from our uh, meta-analysis for the randomized control trial. Thank you. Okay, we're open for discussion. Um, Maybe not. Okay. Um, after your uh, in-depth review of this topic and these randomized controlled trials, you know, I, I, I understand your conclusion that it's hard to make a definitive judgment. In your personal opinion, which way would you go after reviewing well, this data? Um, during my last two years of being a surgical um, trainee registrar, I think so. I've never seen any, any consultant or any of my boss to do um, uh, laparoscopic lavage for any of these per perforated diverticulitis. They will always go for a open procedure with sigmoidectomy and formation of colostomy and reversal later on if um, that's feasible. Okay. All right, thank All right. you very thank much. You. Thank you.